so in uh, previous class uh, we discussed about uh, the approximate estimation of uh, endurance limit so that is either by means of uh, so rotating beam experiment so which will takes a lot of time so as well as consumes uh, requires greater time to calculate the endurance limit for a such uh, one particular material so in, we need to calculate the series of experiments for that so in order to record the uh, uh, failure points data in a recording uh, recording uh, counter so and then uh, there is an approximation technique will be gen uh, developed uh, by means of various experiments conducted uh, so with the function of endurance limit is taken as a function of ultimate uh, strength so after that and coming to the today's class uh, so let us see so there are the failure criteria for the machine members uh, when it is subjected to fluctuating stresses so if you observe uh, the sn curve we observe a sn curve for the machine component uh, that is uh, using expert rotating beam experiment uh, we observed uh, in the previous class so let me show you that uh, sn curve for you again so you can go through it so here it is uh, sun curve so i'm sharing the screen again here it is so it is a sun curve we are uh, developed by using the rotating beam experiment so if you observe so this is a s that is a stress corresponding to the so there are number of uh, failure number of cycles so it has to be the stand so let us come uh, see in, uh, observe in this uh, sn curve so up to 10 power 3 number of cycles if you observe clearly the curve is uh, declined uh, so so in a regular fashion and again uh, about 10 power 3 number of cycles it will be gradually declined uh, uh, further more the number of 10 power 3 uh, number of cycles so after that uh, if you observe at 10 power 6 number of cycles so this curve is going to be flatten so it is observing a uh, straight line here that corresponding stress uh, we can consider it as a endurance limit for particular material so here this sn curve can be divided into two regions so up to 10 power 3 number of cycles uh, so this will be considered as a low cycle fatigue region and above 10 power 3 cycles uh, the machine members is considered as a, uh, that is the the region we call it as high cycle fatigue that is up to infinite life so whatever never uh, it is operating beyond 10 power 6 number of cycles we consider it as an uh, Uh, infinite uh, life for a machine component or a material so here this sn curve can be divided into two regions so one is low cycle fatigue that is up to 10 power 3 number of cycles and above 10 power 3 cycles it is high cycle fatigue so observe here so whatever the machine components that will fall under this region that is a, so this low cycle fatigue region so that is a short lived components either missiles or bolts and nuts rivets uh, so likewise so which are very short uh, lived components uh, that will uh, withstand up to 1000 number of cycles so here so whatever the machine components that falls under uh, this particular region that is a low cycle fatigue region uh, so there is no such specific criteria or the design criteria are applicable for the low cycle fatigue machine components so instead uh, we go with uh, a simple uh, general uh, design procedure uh, we that is a design approach uh, we followed in the uh, static type of loading so that is uh, taking from uh, stress equal to load by area or a torsion equation or bending moment equation uh, we can calculate uh, the dimensions for the machine components that will which will fall under this region but here uh, Uh, coming to this uh, region so in along with the static design uh, approaches we can also make a slight modification with here uh, 
uh, in taking a greater factor of safety in uh, case of uh, static type of loading you can take a factor of safety in that cases uh, around the three to five times of uh, normal uh, uh, strength so as a reserve strength by providing factor of safety of three to five but coming to the machine component subjected to the fluctuating type of stresses uh, that again falls under these low cycle fatigue region we can increase the factor of safety is around eight to 11 or 12 uh, uh, factor of safety that is uh, providing a greater reserve strength for the material uh, in order to withstand the fluctuating type of stress. So that uh, for the machine components which will operate under this region that is low cycle fatigue region that is up to 1000 number of cycles there is no separate design criteria is to be followed. So whatever the design criteria so we are following in the static type of loading the same criteria is to be developed or same to be applicable for the low cycle fatigue machine components uh, instead uh, we can provide a greater factor of safety here clear and coming to the another region so that will part of uh, the first low cycle fatigue region and next uh, come to the next region that is a high cycle fatigue region so here so whatever the machine components which will operate in this particular region uh, so that is about 10 power 3 number of cycles or it can operate uh, so up to infinite number of cycles that is infinite life we call it as so these so whatever the design criteria we followed for the static type of loading is not uh, suitable for the machine components who can operate in this particular region so that is high cycle fatigue region so for this case uh, so we require a specific design criteria need to be followed that we need to discuss uh, in this case clear so so as we discussed uh, in our previous class for the fluctuating stresses uh, so we are having uh, for the fluctuating stresses we may have the two component of stresses so one is uh, so mean stress so another one is variable stress so again i am representing in a sine wave so for example uh, you can take uh, a curve so that is a stress uh, so for the reversed, completely reversed type of stress, which is from zero to maximum to zero. So that is uh, again the minimum uh, compression, maximum compression to maximum tension. So this is a completely reversed bending stress is indicated. So from here, this position to up to this maximum stress value, you can denote with uh, mean stress. So here it is denoted by mean stress sorry so denoted by variable stress or uh, stress amplitude that is a uh, sigma a so from the mean line to so the maximum point of stress to the maximum stress you can take a mean stress or a stress amplitude so if so for example uh, so for the mean stress so for example it is an uh, fluctuating type of stress so in this case uh, it is a fluctuating stress so here i can take uh, so from here to that is from reference value to the mean of the medium line of the two stresses you can take as a mean stress so for uh, each uh, uh, type of fluctuating stress uh, there may be a two different components one is the mean stress will be there and the variable stress should be there so for example it is a completely reversed so here uh, so the mean stress will also pass us that the reference line can pass us through the uh, medium line here so in this case uh, the mean stress is tends to zero so here uh, it is taken as a mean stress so it is directly equal to zero so that is for completely reversed. So there is always a two component of stresses will be observed. Here that is one is a mean stress and another one is variable stress component. These are the two main components of stresses will be uh, observed for the fluctuating stresses. And the letters are represented in, in a graphical fashion between these two. So that is a mean stress between mean stress to the variable stress. So here, uh, so taking uh, so mean stress on x-axis, so that is sigma m here. 
and uh, the variable stress on y axis sigma a or uh, sigma v so both are same so stress amplitude or variable stress so x axis taking the mean stress and y axis we are taking the stress amplitude so for example if the variable variance so stress amplitude is zero so which means uh, stress amplitude means uh, so that is from uh, here to here so this is the stress amplitude sigma a yeah, so as we discussed so if the stress amplitude is zero which means there is no curve is to be formed here so instead we can observe only a straight line so there is no these uh, fluctuation that is no amplitude here so that uh, whenever the sigma a is zero so the stress is not a fluctuating it is going to be a straight line which indicate which, which is known as a, a static type of stress for the static type of loading conditions uh, or the stresses uh, the design uh, criteria we followed uh, is only uh, based on uh, that is uh, either yield strength or ultimate strength so clear so for the static type of loading conditions so the design criteria we uh, follow is uh, uh, is um, yield stress so that is either we are basing uh, the design the designs can be performed based on the yield strength that is sigma y or uh, in some of the brittle uh, materials so for the brittle type of materials we can uh, so perform a designs based on ultimate strength sigma y so that is for uh, when uh, stress amplitude is zero that is a static type of loads the design the machine components can be designed based upon the strength values of either yield strength or ultimate strength one now coming to the case if the mean stress is zero so if uh, variable stress is zero so that is a static type of load then the design criteria is uh, sigma y or sigma u so if the mean stress is zero then the design criteria so when the mean stress is zero as uh, discussed in the previous class uh, so if the mean stress is zero sigma m is zero it is uh, possible only for completely reverse type of bending so that is completely reverse type of uh, stresses that is uh, completely reverse means so here the tensile the magnitude of tensile stress should be equal to magnitude of compressive stress so for that cases only so this mean stress should be zero that is for completely reverse type of stresses which means uh, fluctuating so for the completely reverse stress the design criteria we followed uh, is uh, endurance strength that is a sigma e so that is what uh, we this uh, observed uh, in uh, that is calculated using rotating beam experiment by means of completely reverse type of bending so here when the mean stress is zero the design criteria we follow is endurance strength so that can also be noted on the y axis here so that is noted in y axis that is here uh, at uh, so this is the point of sigma clear so these are the two points we need to remember so one is uh, when the mean stress is zero so the design criteria that is completely reverse type of stress the design criteria is endurance strength so if the variable stress is zero that is a for static load the design criteria is either yield strength or ultimate strength and now coming to the case if the machine component subjected to the both the components of stresses of uh, yield strength that is a uh, uh, ultimate that sorry variable strength or stress amplitude or uh, mean stress so if the machine component subject into both component of stresses that is mean stress and stress amplitude so that can observe so the different uh, failure points so that is different failure regions can be observed so based on the uh, experimental data they can uh, noted the different failure points So like uh, in this fashion so they observed different uh, failure points here so that uh, so if you want to design a machine components uh, so so we need to give a clear idea regarding a safe region and uh, we need to separate the safe region uh, with respect to the failure region so these failure points are representing uh, so so the machine component having uh, the magnitude of uh, stress amplitude in this up to this uh, amount with respect to the mean stress so the failure point can be reaching here that is beyond this region uh, so this uh, indicates uh, so the failure so which means uh, so above this region uh, the machine member is going to fail so that if you design uh, if you give a designs so that can be operate safely within the region below this uh, 
all the failure points so that uh, in order to separate the failure region with respect to uh, safe region we can separate these all the failure uh, uh, points so we can draw a, uh, a specific line here that is a curve can be drawn uh, so i can use a separate color here so that is curve can be drawn uh, so through these uh, positive failure points uh, which is uh, given a possible uh, Clearly, so this will give us a curve, so which will separate so the failure region to the safe region. So on this curve, we call it as a Gerber curve, so which can uh, joins uh, two stresses, that is the endurance stress to the ultimate stress. So these are the two stress limits, that is endurance strength to ultimate strength points. So you can join a curve, that the curve we call it as Gerber curve criteria. So this is the first uh, criteria is a uh, up, up first approach uh, to provide a safe region from the failure points. But coming to the case of Gerber's curve, so if you observe clearly, the sum of the failure points can also falls under this region. So if there is a chance, uh, so the failure can be possible uh, below beneath this curve. So that uh, to make the designs more conservative or safe. So instead of uh, making a curve. So we can provide the curve with uh, a straight line. That is, instead of uh, joining these two strength values of endurance strength and ultimate strength, so by means of curve, we can join these two points of strength uh, by means of uh, a straight line. And this criteria is called uh, Goodman's line criteria. Man's line criteria clear. So, so to avoid that, that is to make the desires more conservative, we are joining the endurance strength to the ultimate strength by means of straight line instead of curve. So, that is Gerber curve. So, again, uh, the same two strength values you can join straight line, we call it as good man's line. But here, if you observe, that is a yield uh, strength as well as uh, they are taking a yield line here. So if you draw an yield line, so here the yield strength will be there. So, so we can draw an yield line by joining two yield strengths on both the values. So here, if you observe clearly, so the according to the Goodman's line criteria, so this uh, line or the, this criteria is allowing uh, the machine components that will fall under the region of uh, yielding. So that is uh, here, if you observe clearly, so this is the region uh, where the machine members can tends to yield so that is yielding means it can take a deformation in many of the cases of uh, machine components uh, the deformation uh, is not desired condition so whenever the material is going to deform in a uh, working condition uh, it will affect the uh, transmission of power or a motion so which means uh, the yielding of material is not desired in many of the machine component but here according to the goodman's line criteria it allowing uh, the material uh, in yielding so that is the region uh, reason uh, why so the goodman's line is not uh, so not that much of effective for the ductile type of material so that reason uh, that arises uh, one more design criteria is need to be look into so that is a one more criteria is arises that is joining of uh, endurance strength instead of ultimate strength we can join endurance strength to yield strength so here uh, this criteria is called uh, soderberg criteria or soderberg line Clear. So these are the three criteria. So according to these the Soderberg criteria, this line should not allowing any failure points below this region. So as well as it should not also allowing uh, the material or the machine component in failing in yielding. So that uh, the designs are more conservative. But uh, there is a, one of the disadvantages with the Soderberg line. Uh, so this should not uh, allowing to make uh, a, many of uh, design. Uh, wide range so here this is a region which is a very safe region to provide the designs 
so in order to provide a wide range of uh, uh, designs uh, we can also go with the modified goodman's line so instead of going with the soderberg line so here it is a goodman's line is safe up to this region that is intersect point of uh, so this yield line so up to this region this is also a safe region for the designs so that uh, we can also consider this region to make designs so as well as uh, so here from goodman's line can be modified from the intersection point of yield line of goodman's line so from point uh, here so whatever the point a or x you can take so from point a instead of the line that passes towards the ultimate strength so the goodman's line can be modified from point a to the point uh, c so instead of uh, that is ultimate yield strength so instead of joining uh, goodman's line to the yield strength this line can be joined directly to the yield strength so that uh, that makes uh, the designs more vul vulnerable so as well as which are very much safe uh, according to the goodman's line criteria that is modified goodman's line criteria so that it should not allowing any material or the machine components in, in the region of uh, yielding clear so one is a gerber curve so which can separate the failure region to the safe region by means of curve and uh, to avoid to make designs more conservative instead of the curve uh, we can uh, draw a straight line by joining an endurance strength to the ultimate strength from here to here so as well as uh, so this goodman's line is uh, providing uh, that is allowing the material uh, into yielding zone so that uh, we can go with uh, one more criteria that joins endurance strength to yield strength so and there is one more uh, part that is uh, we are having uh, the region where which is also safe we are neglecting by means of uh, soderberg line so that uh, we go with another criteria that is modified goodman's line that is from goodman's line joins from endurance strength to uh, ultimate strength but in a good man's line the line can be joined endurance strength to yield strength through the yield line that is the intersect point of yield line so that it will gives a wide a greater range of designs that is a flexibility of designs can be provided the greater so compared to the soderberg line and good man's line clear so these are the three main criteria so out of which the most using criteria are good man's line criteria or soderberg criteria we are using so and coming to the equations for the soderberg line method or goodman's line method so which are both the lines are. so here goodman's line or soderberg line both are a straight line so you can take in straight line equation for that uh, x by a plus y by b equal to uh, 1 so here x is that is a and b are intercepts on x and y axis so here a and b are uh, uh, intercept points on x and y axis so here x axis is a uh, uh, mean stress that is sigma m so and their intercept point uh, is a uh, sigma y or sigma e, u so that is based on type of line so if we go with uh, gerber line that is a uh, goodman's line the intercept point is sigma u if it is a soderberg line intercept point is sigma y so we can take a sigma y for soderberg line or sigma u for goodman's line so instead i can write this so i can write r so that is based on the def different line so if it is a good man's line you go with the sigma u if it is a soderberg line you go with sigma y plus uh, y by b so here y axis is a variable stress or stress amplitude sigma e or sigma v so by their intercept point is always uh, endurance strength that is sigma e that is equal to 1 by factor of safety so here x only one so we can consider a factor of safety it will give us uh, so 1 by factor of safety so this is the equation that you applied for uh, so both uh, goodman's line criteria as well as the soderberg line criteria clear so again i am going to repeat uh, so how the graph is to be drawn so initially so the graph can be plotted between uh, mean stress that is a two component of stresses so mean stress and uh, stress amplitude if the stress amplitude is zero it is a static type of load for the static type of load the design criteria is a mean strength and ultimate strength so that can be noted on x axis and for if the mean stress is zero it is completely reversed type of stresses uh, that is uh, fluctuating so the design criteria is endurance strength this can be noted on y axis and uh, if the machine component subjected to both the component of stresses that is a uh, mean stress and variable stress is acting on the both the that is a machine component uh, you can observe different failure points so in order to separate the safe region with the failure region it can be this can be drawn uh, 
tech curve by joining endurance strength to ultimate strength and the curve we call it as gerber curve so here in the gerber curve which is a parabolic equation we are uh, obtained so which is somewhat difficult to solve so by using a uh, parabolic equation so that to make designs more uh, uh, conservable so we can uh, draw the straight line by joining the strengths of endurance strength to ultimate strength and the curve or the criteria we call it as goodman's line criteria so that is a line joining endurance strength to ultimate strength and according to these criteria which will allows the material into yield region so this is the region we are allowing the material so which is not desired in many of the machine component this will also consider as a failure of material uh, why because if the material is going to yield or the machine member is going to yield it will uh, affects the transmission of motion and uh, power so that is the region we are not allowing or not uh, desired to allow the material of the designs to operate in this particular region so that we go with the one more criteria that is a uh, that is a line joining endurance strength to yield strength so but in this case which will gives a very good uh, design uh, designs to operate in safe region but we are not we are neglecting the safe region corresponding to the goodman's line so that uh, a goodman's modified goodman line can be modified uh, with uh, along with the yield line so that uh, endurance strength can that is a line can be joined instead of ultimate strength to the yield strength through the yield line so that is a intersect point will be there a so with the yield line so this is a yield line point yield line so that joins yield strength on x axis and y axis so here the goodman's line can be drawn as usual up to point a can obtain a uh, intersect point at the yield line so the line can be joined to the yield strength instead of ultimate strength that is called uh, uh, that is called uh, modified uh, goodman's line criteria clear so that will allows the material that is a machine components uh, to get a uh, safe regions uh, so greater range of uh, designs can be allowed uh, in this region also so that um, so under this region that falls under this curve which will provide the safe region the designs to be uh, safe so this is a straight line equation uh, so from uh, goodman's line or for soderberg line so sigma m by sigma u or y so based upon the type of criteria you can take soderberg line that is a yield strength need to be considered so if it is a goodman's line criteria you can consider ultimate strength that is sigma v by sigma equal to 1 by factor of safety so clear so let's uh, let us uh, see